but I'll introduce myself again. So my name is Nadia. I'm an advisor at Chanat Mission. So our office is actually based in Beijing, which is why I'm based in Beijing, but I am originally from Indonesia. And then I studied at UIBE before, which is International of uh, University of International Business and Economics in Beijing. Uh, my major was Master of World Economics. So I studied there from 2017 to 2019. So it's been a great two years experience for me where I get to uh, get new knowledge, of course, about the world economics. And then I also get to meet new friends from all over the world. Like I've got classmates coming from Mongolia, from Bangladesh, from Thailand. I actually made some Thai best friends uh, during my study in Beijing. And then uh, some of my some of my friends there were also from Russia and also from Tajikistan, Uzbekistan, and other countries. So it's been a wonderful experience for me where I get to meet people coming from different cultural background and also get to live in China, which is the best part. And I'll tell you why living in China and also studying in China is like a good opportunity for you and also that uh, you will never ever regret the decision. So yeah, without further ado, I will also introduce my company, China Mission. Uh, so China Missions is where I work at. So it's an award-winning platform for international students to apply to Chinese universities. And currently we partner with over a hundred of top Chinese universities and we have over 100,000 registered students on our platform. So our company has won several awards as well in the recent years. For example, Holland IQ China at Tech 100, where we got nominated as uh, one of the 100 China at Tech company. And then we also got the Chaoyang Phoenix Grant from the Chaoyang uh, government in Beijing. And a little bit about our team. So our team at China Missions is a multicultural team from various backgrounds and also countries. And then our team members were former students at Chinese University. So our team is actually coming from different part of the world. So like uh, I'm the only one from Indonesia, for example, and then I have no other Indonesian colleague there, but my colleagues are coming from Mongolia. I've got Chinese colleague, and then I've got British colleague, and then I've got some colleagues from African countries like Rwanda, Tanzania, and others. So it's been a great experience as well to learn how to work with people from different culture. And I believe this is also an advantage for us because why we help international students who are coming from different countries around the world to study and this will also give us like the benefit because like for example I can help Indonesian students and it is more uh, convenient for Indonesian students to speak in Bahasa for example and like the same goes with like uh, other uh, students coming from other countries as well so I feel like we get to understand different students from different cultural background because our team is a multicultural team. So yeah here are some of the universities that are partnered with us so for universities which are offering MBBS program, definitely we partner with a lot of them. For example, Tongji University and then Wuhan University. And then uh, we've got other universities like Xiamen University, uh, Capital Medical University, and also other universities which are offering MBBS program in China, which I will discuss after this. So here's the agenda for uh, today's session. So basically I'll let you know about the MBBS admission for the September intake, the application process, and then the tips and trick, and then the frequently asked questions. Yeah, as I promised before, I'll let you know why studying in China is definitely the best decision for you, That something that you will never ever regret. So first of all, if you studied in China, you will also get to learn Chinese language because Chinese language is the most spoken language in the world. So definitely as an MBBS student, you need to learn Chinese language as well. Normally it is uh, inside the curriculum of the MBBS, and it is very important for you to master this language. Why? Because at the end of the study, there will be internship as well, where you will interact with Chinese patients. That's why uh, knowing Chinese language will be very beneficial for you for your final year. And then not only that, it will be beneficial for you for your entire life. Because as we see, China is becoming more and more recognized in the world. And then Chinese, knowing like Chinese language, it will give like a lot of benefits for you in the future. And then the second, uh, the second reason is because China is the popular destination for international students now. So uh, in China, we have about 500,000 international students studying at the moment. And the third one is because Chinese universities I, are like uh, have high reputation and also globally recognized in the world. So Chinese universities are increasingly well-respected in the world and the number 
uh, included in the major uh, in the major global university rankings has risen significantly over the past few years, and as uh, and especially for the universities which offering MBBS program, actually most of them are internationally recognized university. How do I know? Because I checked the uh, WHO list of the recognized medical universities in the world, and actually we found that about 187 Chinese universities are listed here, which means that it is globally recognized in the whole world. And then the fourth reason why you should be studying in China and not pursuing MBBS in another country is because studying in China is actually uh, is actually relatively affordable. So tuition fee for the foundation program, if you need to take one, it starts only for uh, from about 100, 1,100 US dollar. And then for the MBBS program itself, the tuition fee starts from 4,000 US dollar. As for the campus accommodation, it is relatively cheap as well. It's about 35 to 100 RMB per day per person. For the off-campus, you can always choose to live off-campus. Uh, the fee would be from 2,000 RMB per month. If you choose to like rent a place outside of campus, like let's say rent a room with a shared bathroom and also shared kitchen, but the price may be varies as well. So for example, if you choose to study in Beijing and Shanghai, obviously it will be more expensive compared to if you live somewhere else. So yeah, for living expenses on average, including the accommodation, you can spend about 500 to 900 per month. That's like the living expenses plus the accommodation fee. Because like eating in China is uh, relatively cheap in my opinion, compared to like, let's say, if I eat abroad, like in Singapore or like in Europe, it's way cheaper in China. And then for public transportation as well, it is relatively cheap as well. So I would say studying MBBS in China is definitely cheaper than if you studied MBBS program in another country. For example, if you studied this program in UK or US or other European countries. So yeah, uh, the next reason why you should be studying in China is because China is a country with fast development. So Chinese government has been investing a lot in developing the region's road, railways, and also transportation system, and also other infrastructure. Besides that, Chinese government is continuously supporting uh, researchers and doing like science, scientific research, and also hospitals to give like the best healthcare system in China. And then the sixth reason why you should be coming to China to study is because you will experience the technology advancement in China that no other country has. So you can easily do everything with a single click from your smartphone in China. So you can do grocery shopping, you can rent a bike, you can call a taxi, you can pay for like literally everything. Even if you, uh, even if you go shopping on a wet market, you can always pay with your smartphone by using WeChat Pay or Alibay. So this will definitely be a new environment for you because of the help of the technology and I believe that you will never ever regret coming to China and become very comfortable with your life in China later. And so in conclusion, studying in China is an adventure of a lifetime because there are endless travel travel opportunities. So don't only don't only study in China, but please also spend your time well to travel across China and then you get to discover delicious Chinese cuisine and then meet friends from all over the world just like I did. And last but not least, you get to develop a global mindset. And this is very important for you because you are going to be a medical doctor who will, be, uh, who will uh, spread, your, spread your happiness and also spread your help to all the people who need your help in anywhere around the world. So yeah, a little bit about the admission information for the MBBS intake as for the MBBS program is that the next intake will be in September 2020. And then for the application deadline for the A-list universities, this I am referring to two universities which are offering MBBS programs such as Fudan University and also Zhejiang University. So for these two universities, actually the application deadline have passed because it was in uh, December and also for Zhejiang University, it was at the end of April. And then for other universities, you can still apply for the MBBS program and then the application deadline would be around May to July. As for the CSE scholarship, uh, actually the application deadline have passed as well. Sorry for that, because it was in February to March 2020. So yeah, so this is like the brief of the application process and like how to complete your application on China admissions. So basically what you need to do is to choose the program. So you know you wanted to study MBBS, but 
there are actually like a uh, quite number of universities in China which are offering MBBS programs. So you have to choose uh, which university is the most suitable for you to study or you can also ask for our help and we can help to suggest you some of the programs. And then what you need to do next is to, is to apply online. After that, you can complete the online application on China admissions platform and then uh, you need to upload the documents. I will let you know the list of the documents later on. Last but not least is to pay the application fee to finalize your application and submit it on the China admissions website. So what to do after you submit the application? So after that, our team will review your application. We will check whether or not you're eligible for the program. We will check whether or not you have completed documents. After you completed everything, we will submit your application to the university. And then we will wait for the, uh, for the university's decision. So basically, they will let you know whether they will accept you or they will reject you. And then if you're accepted, the university will uh, ask you to pay the deposit fee to the university. So they basically will, uh, will send you a pre-admission letter along with a letter saying that you have to pay a deposit fee. The amount of the deposit fee can be various across universities. It's sometimes they ask for like about, let's say a thousand US, a uh, thousand RMB, but some other time they ask you to pay for the, for the full amount of the tuition fee. So after that, after you complete the payment, then the university will send the visa form and also the admission notice to your home country. So you can apply for visa at the Chinese embassy in your home country and then pack your bag, put your ticket and fly to China. But what happens if you're rejected by the university and if you still have time, I mean that if the other university's application deadline is not yet over, then you can always apply to another university. It is okay to apply to multiple uh, Chinese universities at the same time and I, I actually suggest you to apply to multiple Chinese universities at the same time especially for MBBS because it is a very competitive program. So yeah, do you know that there are 45 approved MBBS programs in China in English? So basically these are the list of the uh, approved MBBS programs in China in English. You can take a look at this, you can probably screenshot this as well. So yeah, a lot of these Chinese universities can accept international students for up to 100 students every year. And then for the popular and also recommended programs in China, these are the top MBA, sorry, top MBBS program that you can still apply for right now. So you can still apply for Shanto Medical Co Shanto University Medical College up to May this year and then for Capital Medical University as well. And then Jiangsu University and also Huachong University of Science and Technology, Shandong University, and Wuhan University. So basically, these six universities are the top uh, are the top choices for the MBBS program that you can still apply for. But what happens if you uh, if your budget is not as high as like let's say forty thousand or like fifty thousand RMB per year, then you can choose to apply to universities which have a lower tuition fee. So this doesn't mean that these universities have like a bad quality education. No, it doesn't mean that at all. But these universities offer MBBS with a lower tuition fee. So if let's say your budget is about 30,000 RMB per year or 4,000 US dollar, these are the four universities that you can consider. And then if you wanted to know more about other MBBS programs that I cannot mention today, you can simply go to apply.china-admissions.com slash search to get more information about MBBS program. Because we do display like, uh, like about 20 or 30 MBBS programs in China that we can help you apply for. And then for the foundation program. So what is a foundation program? So I noticed that some of the international students, maybe you don't have like a good grades during your high school, which is not good definitely for your MBBS application, or maybe your A-level your A level result wasn't good, or maybe like there are so many other reasons why, like uh, that you are not yet eligible for the MBBS program. You can always choose to study the foundation program in science or what's called the pre-medical program. Normally it's a uh, the program will last for like one semester or one year. It depends on the university as well. And then these two are my top recommendation. First one is Jiangsu University. Second one is Dalian Medical University. So for these two universities, uh, both of these two universities have MBBS program as well. So for Jiangsu University, uh, their MBBS program will be offered in September. So you can choose to like, let's say, 
join the foundation program for one semester or one year because their foundation program is also available in the March intake. For those of you who, let's say, graduated high school in January and you have nothing to do, you don't want to wait for like the next, for like six months or, or more. So you can just go to China, join the foundation program for six months and then uh, continue to your MBBS in September. But for Dalian Medical University, as for this year's intake, they actually do have March intake for their MBBS program. So you can join their pre-medical for like one semester or one year and then move to their MBBS program the next intake. So uh, these are also the programs for the traditional Chinese medicine program if you are interested in pursuing traditional Chinese medicine. And also for those of you who are uh, above the age requirement of the MBBS program, uh, it's best for you to apply for this two program because uh, traditional Chinese medicine programs, they don't have a strict age requirement to apply. So let's say you're 35 years old and you wanted to study about med medicine in China, then it's best for you to apply for Bachelor in Clinical Integrative Chinese and Western Medicine because it is uh, not possible for you to get the MBBS admission because you exceed the age requirement. So yeah, so what is the age requirement for the MBBS program? So basically the age requirement is this. The duration of study will be six years for the MBBS program. And then there are English taught and also Chinese taught MBBS program. And for the age requirement, Chinese universities are actually very strict in terms of the age requirement for the MBBS program. So it is uh, either 18 to 25 years old or 18 to 30 years old. It actually depends on the university, but mostly it is going to be 18 to 25 years old. And then for the subject required in high school, which means that your transcript which means that uh, you have to study these subjects during your high school is, uh, is the science stream, which are biology, physics, chemistry, and math. So what happened if you don't have one of these uh, subjects, if you didn't study one of these subjects or if you didn't study any of these subjects at all, again, my recommendation would be to study foundation program in science or the pre-medical program where you get to uh, study science subjects to prepare yourself before the MBBS. So yeah, for the available seats for the international students, it is up to 100 seats each year. And the intake for the MBBS program is mostly in September. So how to apply? First is to go to apply.chanaadmissions.com slash search. And then the page is will look like that. And then you can just simply type MBBS over there and then scroll over to search which one of the program is the most suitable for you. But if you're still confused, you can always contact us to uh, get our recommendation. And then these are the required documents that you need to prepare for your MBBS application. So basically, all you need is passport and then photo, graduation certificate, official highest transcript, personal statement, and you need uh, to submit your TOEFL or IELTS call as well if you are from, if you are not from English speaking country. However, if let's say your uh, study in high school was completely taught in English, right? For example, you studied in international school, then you don't need to do TOEFL or IELTS school. Uh, you don't need to do TOEFL or IELTS exam. So in substitute, you can ask your school to provide you the proof that your medium of instruction during high school was English. And then you need to submit the guarantor letter or the bank statement. So basically, if your parents are going to be the one who who pay for your study in China, then you can ask for their bank statement over the last six months. And then the amount of money in the bank should be enough to cover your expenses to study in China for at least one year. So next up is about application fee. So application fee is required by the university to process your application, prepare, and send the admission notice and visa form to your home address, and it is non-refundable. So how to pay application fee? We actually provide you with some a convenient payment methods, for example, Visa and MasterCard, PayPal, WeChat, or Alipay if you're in China. And you can also do a bank transfer as well. So yeah, uh, next up is about tips and tricks. How to choose the right program for you. So first of all is to choose the major that you want to study. Obviously, those of you who joined today's session knows that you wanted to study MBBS. But you need to know as well, what is your future career goal? Let's say you wanted to become a doctor. Uh, like, where do you want to be a doctor? So for example, I'm from Indonesia and later on I wanted to study in China and then after graduate, 
after graduation, I wanted to go back to Indonesia and become a doctor in Indonesia. In Indonesia, this is something that you need to know because uh, based on our experiences, different government, they may have like different regulation as well in terms of the recognized Chinese universities where you can get your MBBS degree from. So yeah, it's best to know this so you it can help you to limit your choices and also you get to know like which what, uh, which of the universities are going to be accepted. So you can study, you can choose to study at those universities instead. And then the next one is about the budget. So you need to know who will fund your studies in China and also how much is your budget. Because like I said before, the uh, average tuition fee for the MBBS program is going to be about 4,000 US dollar. But yeah, I mean like there are like number of uh, Chinese universities which are offering MBBS program in China. So it's best for you if you know how much is your budget. So you can also uh, limit your choices. So let's say your budget is only about 30,000 RMB or like 4,000 US dollar. So it means that you will not be applying to universities which offer higher tuition fee. And last but not least in terms of location. So some students that I know, uh, especially those from the tropical countries like me from Indonesia, we don't really like living in a cold, uh, if living in a cold city. So we would definitely uh, like we would definitely avoid studying in cold cities like Harbin, for example. So yeah, if you have preferences like this, it's going to be helpful as well for you to know and also to decide like where you want to study your MBBS program because like a lot of these Chinese universities are located in different countries, uh, different cities in China and different places in China with different weather, different situation and conditions. So if you know the location, do some research on Google as well to, you know, like you can like, uh, Google about Google more about the city in China. So after that, it will definitely give you information about uh, about like which location is the best for you to pursue your MBBS. And then if you're still confused, definitely you can do a little quiz on our platform. So this is the link to the quiz. It's quiz.chinadesadmissions.com. You can take a note of it or you can just simply screenshot this page so you remember the guideline forever. And next step is about the guideline for successful applications. So first of all, you have to meet the eligibility criteria, especially in terms of age, nationality, and academic performance. And then you need to have an excellent academic performance. Why? Because MBBS is actually a very competitive program in China. So there are like other international students coming from different parts of the world who are competing against you to get a seat for a get, uh, to get a seat in the MBBS program. So it's better for you to have an excellent academic performance. So your chances to get the admission will be higher as well. So you need to also have a great Chinese and also great English proficiency. It depends on which program you're applying. So if you're applying for English top program, actually there's no need for you to know any Chinese at all in the beginning. So then please submit all the required documents, complete the application fee payment and then submit everything, your application, your documents, and the application fee payment before the deadline on China admissions platform. And then, uh, like I said before, it is best to apply to multiple universities to increase your chances because MBBS program is a very competitive program in China and students from all, all over the world are competing to get their seats uh, in the MBBS program in China. And then uh, the next step is about why China admissions? Why using China admissions? Why are you talking about China admissions? First of all, why you should be using China admissions is because we are free of charge. So basically we don't charge any service fee to help you apply. It is 100% free. And then uh, what you need to pay is you only need to pay the application fee because it is required by the university. If you're still confused, if you still need our help, please do let us know, email us or like contact us by any form, it is completely free as well to do like a consultation with us. So the next reason is because China Admissions is a one platform for all. So like I mentioned before, it is best for you to apply to multiple Chinese universities to increase your chances of getting the admissions. So yeah, with just one click on China Admissions website, you can apply to like two, three, four, or like more of, like a lot more of universities in China. And then the last one is because China Admissions are responsive and we're reachable anytime by email, WhatsApp. And we can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation uh, session via Skype or Zoom or WhatsApp. 
to get more information about MBBS and we will guide you further with your MBBS application. So these are the uh, frequently asked questions. So the next intake for Chinese University MBBS program is in September. Uh, but there is also March intake for the MBBS program, but there's only like one or two university, but which offer MBBS program in March and the rest will offer this only in September. And then is dormitory available? The answer is, uh, it depends. It depends on the university. Some universities do have lots of spaces for the dormitories for their international students. And then uh, normally you have to book the dormitory after you receive the admission letter. And we can also help you book online. So what is the age requirement to apply for MBBS program? It is either 18 to 25 or 18 to 30 years old. And for the foundation program, uh, it is about the age if you wanted to continue to the MBBS program. So uh, what happened if you're under 18? So if you're under 18, you need to find a guardian in China. So the guardian can be either Chinese person or a foreigner living in China with a valid working permit. Remember, a student cannot become another student's guardian. So if let's say your guardian is also an international student in China, uh, we're sorry to inform you, but your friend cannot be your guardian. So how much it is cost to study in China to, for the MBBS program, the tuition fee starts from 30,000 RMB per year or about uh, 4,000 US dollar. And then for the living cost in total, it is going to be about 500 to 900 US dollar per month. Again, it depends on your lifestyle and then it also depends on the type of accommodation you choose. Normally, if you choose to live off campus, it's going to be more expensive. And last but not least, it also depends on where you're living. So if you're living in Beijing in Shanghai, please do expect that your living expenses will be higher than if you're living in another city. So next question, can I work and study at the same time? The answer is no, you're not allowed to work in China if you're a foreign student. However, you are allowed to do internship in China as long as the university permit. And also uh, for the MBBS students in particular, there will be internship at the end of the study. So during your sixth year, your final year, you will do an internship for one year at the appointed hospital. So what are the additional required documents? Aside from the one that I already mentioned, the additional documents are like a foreigner physical examination form and also non-criminal record. And then what is the application deadline? Application deadline is in May to July for those universities who are still open and still accepting applications, but most of them actually ended in June. So a lot of them have application deadline at the end of June. So yeah, I think that's, uh, that's pretty much the summary of my presentation today. So if you have any questions in the future, if you wanted to do consultation with us, if you wanted to get in touch with us, please do email us or also send us a WhatsApp message or we can schedule a time for consultation as well. And if you have social media, I'm pretty sure like every one of you have social media accounts because this is 2020 anyway. So yeah, if you have Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, Twitter, or you use WeChat, please do follow us on any of your social media accounts and it will be very great to get in touch for you on the social media as well. And additional information, we actually have the MBBS group, MBBS WeChat group. So if you have WeChat and you want to join our MBBS WeChat group, you can just uh, scan the QR code over there to follow our official account and then say, say it there that you wanted to join the MBBS uh, WeChat group so we can share you the QR code and then you can join the group. So yeah, that's all. I hope you guys enjoy my presentation and now I will uh, answer some of the questions that is already here. So from Anonymous, do any students do one year internship in USA? Is that possible? Uh, normally, the internship will be done in China because the university have like a partnership with like some universities in the city. But I would say it's actually possible to do it overseas as long as the, your university have the link to the hospital in the US. So as long as they have the link, it's okay. From Ferdas, 
I don't have any person in China because I'm, I am under 18. So if you don't know anybody in China and you're under 18, I would suggest uh, probably just wait for one more year or like two more years until you turn 18 and then you can apply and also study in China. That will be like the safest way to uh, apply if you are under 18. And then in the meantime, because you'll be doing nothing anyway, right? While waiting for yourself to turn 18, you can always learn Chinese language. Learning Chinese language is always beneficial. And there are so many online Chinese language classes available. So you can always learn Chinese language while waiting for you to be uh, from Marshall, FSC is undergraduate program just like A level. To be honest, I don't really understand your question. So maybe you can clarify it more so I can answer it. From anonymous, I know it is for different universities, but in general, what are the acceptance rate? Well, I would say the acceptance rate is actually depends on you as well. So if you have a high academic performance and you meet all the eligibility criteria, I would say the acceptance rate will be high. But if let's say your grades are not very good and then let's say you're above 30, then your acceptance rate may not be that high. Yeah, I see that there are no more questions here. Right? Oh yeah, there are more. So yeah, I think I can answer a few more questions before I end the session. Uh, for QQ application, I Thing. You can just find it on internet on how QQ works. So basically, it, you can just sign up for QQ and get your account there. Is Yangzhou Medical University part of the WHO approved schools in China? Yes, it is a part of the 45 approved schools that provide English taught MBBS program in China. So from Aduhene, I have applied a school at Chi Chi Har since January, but no response yet. So you need to know whether or not you complete your application. If you are completing your application and you submitted it there, it's best for you to follow up your application. And if you need our help to follow up your application, please do email us and also WhatsApp us as well. Uh, you can let us know your application number there and uh, like, like the detail of your application and we will help you follow up. From Esther, can I come for MBBS in China with my family? So uh, like your family member can come in China with like other like different type of visa. They definitely will not come to China under student visa if they're not studying in China, but they can come in China under different type of visa, for example, tourist visa or the family visiting visa. And then uh, from Anonymous, how long does it take for them to process your admission? Normally, it takes about four to eight weeks for the university to process your application and also to give an update on whether or not you get accepted. Or like, for example, some of the university have additional application steps, like they will invite you to join the online interview and so on. So normally, after four to eight weeks, they will let you know the update. So from Anonymous, between Dalian Medical University and Jinchou Medical University, which one would you recommend? Uh, I think this is a tough question. And also it depends, once again, it depends on your grades as well. Uh, but I think I would recommend, I mean, for the for this September intake, I would recommend Dalian Medical University because Jinchou Medical University's at, uh, admission is not yet open for for this September intake. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to join for this September intake, then it's best for you to apply to Dalian Medical University. Okay, yeah, Abdullahi, definitely. I can return to the slide where I posted about university offering MBBS in English again. So for the present, uh, for the percentage requirement for the MBBS program. I'll wait up. So for the percentage, I would say it is best if you have like about, let's say 75 to like 80% and above. But if your grades are not that high or maybe you're still confused, please do email us, send us your transcript and we will help you check. And we can also help you check with the university as well. 
uh, yeah, from Esther. I mean, can I come with my little son for that? That's a special request. Then you need to, we can help you check with the university whether or not it is possible because your son will need like additional visa as well for the, I think it should be like the family visiting visa or something, but you need the university permission to bring your son over to China because you'll be the one studying in the university. Yeah, from Isaac, I think you can check the list here on whether or not this two university, Chivang and Jingganshang Medical University is a part of WHO approved school. And then from Anonymous, did everyone who applied to Chichang get shortlisted for an interview? Actually, some of our students do get uh, called for the online interview with Zhejiang University already. I remember there are two or three of our students who got called for the online, inter online interview with uh, Fudan and also with Zhejiang University already. From Anonymous, when will the application form release? Wait, I will give you information on how to apply. Oh yeah, you can screenshot, please screenshot this page and then you can just apply online on our platform over here. For our, from Anonymous for MBBS, which is better, Wuhan or Tongji? I know they're both amazing university. Yes, it's true, but if you are applying now, you can only apply to Wuhan University because Tongji's university's deadline have already passed. It was in April, but for Wuhan University's deadline, it's in June. Yeah, from Gigi, I'm sorry, but my WeChat account has reached its minimum, it has reached its maximum uh, limit of helping new users registering to WeChat. So I'm, I'm really sorry, but I cannot help you there. But if there is anybody in the in this Zoom meeting that have WeChat and are willing to help Gigi, please do let her know. Uh, from Lindy, how hard is it to follow MBBS in China given that I grew up speaking Chinese overseas? So if you wanted to study MBBS in Chinese, then you need to have HSK level five certificate to apply. So I think if you speak, write, and read Chinese very well and reach as a HSK level five level, then it should not be a problem for you to join and also to follow MBBS in Chinese. Okay, from Dharmendra Soni from India. I am a local consultant for China MBBS. My customers are not taking interest for MBBS in China now after COVID-19 impact. Yeah, I'm really sorry of what happened. Yeah, COVID-19 is definitely like uh, not a good situation for us anywhere around the world, but we can see that Chinese government have handled it very well. So there are actually a huge positive improvement happening in China every day. And then the number of the newly infected cases are like dropping way down. And then I heard that like, for example, in Beijing, there are like no new cases these days. So it's definitely like a good, it's definitely like a good sign from China as well that they can manage to solve this COVID-19 issue very well and also very fast. And how will it be safe to send students to Chinese university this year? So I would say that given the fact that we see Chinese university, Chinese government are doing their best, the best that they can to solve the COVID-19 issue, I would say that it is actually safe to study in China. And then based on my experience as well, living in China for a few years, I would say living in China is actually safe with or without the COVID-19 because Chinese government are doing their best to protect everyone who are in China, whether it's foreigner or it's a local citizen. For anonymous att attendee, which universities are Ghana Ghanaians mostly accepted? Uh, I would say it depends on your grades as well. So I don't think like there are a certain preferences for uh, in terms of nationality from the university. So they would treat everybody equally. And yeah, it depends on your grades. You can send over your transcript to us, to our WhatsApp or email address, which is just on the screen right now. So after that, we can help you choose the university which are likely to accept you. 
So from anonymous, I think this is the last question that I can cover today. So if you have any more questions, you can just uh, please let us know on email or WhatsApp. So yeah, last questions answer. What happened to those who their country's border have been closed and aren't sure if they'll make it by September? What will happen? I think you, it depends. Again, it depends. I also am not sure what will happen in the future and then what will happen if, let's say, something like this happened. But if, let's say, you already applied to Chinese University and then by September, China is already open, for example, and then, but your country is still under a lockdown, I think you can let the university know this, about this situation, letting them know that your country is still experiencing a lockdown at the moment. So they can help you to like defer your application, let's say for the next year, or like help you to refund your tuition fee if that's possible. So I'm pretty sure Chinese universities will also understand your situation and do not worry about that. So yeah, I think that's all for the question and answer today. If you still have any questions, I would really suggest you to just uh, email us or WhatsApp us on this, on this email address and also WhatsApp number and we would gladly assist you with your MBBS questions and also MBBS application. Thanks a lot for your time today. I'm really happy that a lot of you are joining for today's session. So yeah, see you next time, guys. Bye.